The message that God has been speaking to me today has to do with cleaning the inside of the bowl. And that's, you know, he was speaking that to me this evening. And so that's what we're going to go ahead and take a look at that in Matthew. One thing that I want to tell you, though, it, there was another thing that he was talking with me about because I was feeling this kind of, um, not anxiety, but um, but like kind of a pressure to, uh, you know, I, I want you to know it's always on my mind doing these videos and making sure that I am sitting with God and that I am making sure that every single day matters, that every single day counts um, with what God has me doing. And I don't slack off on that, even to the extent that, you know, I could take a break from the workshop and the Bible study and, you know, do these videos at my convenience or take a break altogether. I mean, I have every right to do that, but I'm always doing whatever it is that I can do. If I'm capable of doing it, then I will do it. Even when I've been ill, right? Like when I've been sick, I'm still talking with you about, okay, this is what's going on. And this is, you know, this is how I'm understanding or this is what God's calling me into. This is what he's dealing with me on. I'm always, always offering myself each day. But one thing that I want to tell you is, you know, obviously you know that I'm here at my daughter's house with my my son-in-law and my daughter and my new grandson. And, you know, he's two days old today. We labored with her. Uh, you know, we're all exhausted and working hard. I'm cooking for the kids. I'm cleaning for them. I'm taking care of the baby. You know, I'm on, I'm on little sleep, but I'm showing up. I'm showing up to the Bible study. I'm showing up for the videos and stuff like that. But you're going to see that the videos are, you know, obviously going to decrease for the time being while I'm here. And uh, as I was taking this up with God and asking him, okay, how do I still do this? Because my, even though I have my grandchild here and believe me, he is my world right now. I know that my first priority is to do what God has me doing. I know that. So I'm not taking this, I'm not taking the time off. Now, what I, I, there's a couple of things I want to say. One is if I'm showing up and you've made a commitment to do the workshop or to do the Bible study and I'm showing up, you got to show up too. And I mean, not just show up and with your mouth open like a, like a bird mouth, you know what I mean? You got to show up and interact, bring your questions, be prepared don't have a bird mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like to be spoon fed, I'll show up for you. But my purpose is not to spoon feed. That's not what God has set me apart to do. And he's not what he set you apart to do to be spoon fed. You need to show up and you need to be accountable for asking the questions that you have and also interacting and bringing what you can bring. Even if it's just that you're making some sort of comment, like, here's what stood out to me. Here's what I liked about this chapter. Here's what I'm wondering about. Here's how I'm applying it. But sometimes people are not participating in that way. And it is important for you to do that, to participate in your own covenant, in the body, contributing to the body and edifying the body. Now, I, I want to tell you where that's at in scripture. Remember that Paul said that everyone's supposed, everyone shows up. They all have their gifts. Everybody is supposed to be contributing here. One speaks a word, one has a hymn, one has a, you know, blah, blah, blah. Figure out what your part is and bring it. I got a request today to do Passover. Uh, you know, there, on the first day of Passover, there's an assembly. On the last day of Passover, there's an assembly. If you want to do that, I am willing to do that. We can do a, a you know, an online uh, group. And what I propose is that each one brings something a testimony, a verse, something, whatever it is that God is putting on your heart to bring. If you would like to do this, if you would like to assemble with us, bring what you can bring, bring what God is convicting you to bring and don't bring something that you're making up, bring what he's convicting you to do so that you can learn how to be part of a body, part of a family, part of a kingdom, part of a temple, because you have your part in this body. And if I'm showing up, I do expect you to show up. I expect you to show up however it is that God has you showing up right now. I expect that you are on a continuous upward trajectory of growth so that you are desiring greater gifts and that eventually you are going to be activated in the role that he has set you apart to do and continue to grow in this kingdom. I'm not here just to give to you as an individual. I'm here to build you, to help build you until 
I'm gone. And you need to take, you know, take advantage of that correctly, accountably. The other thing that I want to say about that is that um, as these videos are kind of slowing down during this time that I'm with my grandchild and my family, I will still be posting videos every day. However, they may not be as frequent or as numerous. And so during this time, I know that there are some people who listen to the channel every day, and I appreciate that. I'm glad. I hope that you are discerning that with God and making sure that you're not distracting or, or um, and what I mean by distracting is distracting from your own relationship with him. So make sure that you're being accountable. But the other thing that I want to say is, you know, as, as I was taking this up with God and asking him, all right, how do I do this? How do I balance what I'm doing with my family? And this wonderful, amazing, like one of the greatest blessings of my life to be a grandma and just look at that little face. Every move he makes is so precious. It's the greatest thing ever. I hear grandparents talk about this all the time. Let me tell you, it's everything and more that they say. And watching my son and my daughter as parents, as godly parents, praying over their child, blessing him, naming him. You know, Jeremiah, they actually changed his middle name. It was Jeremiah Jude, and now it's Jeremiah Luca. Luca is Luke in Italian. And I think my daughter really wanted there to be some sort of Italian in there to honor my mom and my grandma. But, you know, watching them, I mean, it's just been so beautiful, so beautiful. So during this time, as I'm spending time with them, the the answer that I received from the Lord is that take this time. Take this time to enjoy the blessing that he's given me. I am experiencing a blessing for what I've been doing with him. I know that. I know that he has blessed me and that he has blessed my family for the way that we've been living and the way that we stand for him. I know this is a blessing. So it makes complete sense that he's telling me that. Um, and also that, you know, that I can do good quality, a good quality video each day. But I always think of you. I think of you and I want to make sure that you have, you know, that you're staying on track. But what he's telling me is that this is an opportunity for you also to, if you're missing a message that I'm speaking in it, you know, that I'm speaking about what God has built in me, this is a really good opportunity for you to take that feeling of missing what I'm sharing with you and go pursue it with God. Let him build the message in you. I've set a good example for you about how I do that each day. Now it's time for you to apply that. And many of you are applying it, but if you haven't been and you're you're you know kind of waiting it out until I come back, don't do it that way. Use this time right now. And use this time and then ask questions. You know, if you're, as you're sitting with God and you're waiting for him and seeking him on what he wants to speak to you individually, what message he wants to build in you, if you're finding that there's any difficulty in that, you feel free to message me. I may not answer, you know, a lot of you have been messaging me and I'm not answering right away. And I'm, I'm pretty good about answering right away because this is all I do <laughs> in a day. <laughs> But now there's more that I'm doing in a day. So I might not answer right away because obviously this is my, you know, a, a huge priority for me. So take the example that I've set with you and God will give you a message individually. I mean, that's that's what this is all about. It's really not about you receiving God through me. It's really about you learn, you know, I'm teaching you. These are the things that you do. These are the things that I hear from God, right? And you need to get to that point too, where you're sharing with the body and you're saying, you know, just like I'm talking about with the Passover or any time that the body is coming together in Bible study, for example, everybody needs to be accountable for what they're contributing to the body. And I want you guys to start getting into that mentality because a lot of you are still very focused on what you are taking from something. And that is still a very worldly way of thinking. You have to transition into understanding that you have been, that you are part of something bigger. You are not here for self. And that is a very worldly way of thinking. You are here as something bigger. That's why you exist. That's why you were created to be a part of something bigger. All right, let's talk about this message that God is building in me because he hasn't fully put it together. And you know that he doesn't have me really preparing much before I do a video. What he has me doing is it, he will let me know when it's time to do a video and 
He just tells me, open my mouth, look up the scripture. I mean, if he wants me to prepare something or he wants me to familiarize, he'll tell me. But the majority of the time, he'll point the scriptures and I just do it in real time with you. You, you see that that's what I do. So I don't know what all he's going to say. I only know that this is what he's speak. This is the message he's speaking to me right now and the message that he wants me speaking with you. So we're going to go to Matthew 23. So this is Matthew 23. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teacher of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah." The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now, listen to what he said. The greatest among you will be your servant. That's so interesting because I think I I told you, I had a couple of different situations um, in which someone had stolen from me. They They were stealing from my business, and I confronted them about it, and they could not be confronted. And when I took it up with God, he said to me, she will serve you. And then something happened with someone else who attempted to sue me. And you remember the story, if you've heard me talk about it on the channel, that I gave her what she wanted. And this was a person who also had stolen from me. And I was willing to to do one thing, but she wanted more. And so she continued to pursue more. And God told me to give it to her. And when I, but in the interim, I had asked him, what if she tries to do this? And he said, she will die. So in one situation, he said to me, she will serve you. And in the other situation, he said to me, she will die. Very interesting. And I knew that I was hearing from God, but I didn't have a way to like place it. You know, I didn't have a, I didn't really understand what it was that he was saying. But I do understand now there are those who are going to die and there are those who will be saved only as one escaping the flames who, you know, maybe claimed to be Christian, didn't pick it up here. And they are going to be serving the temple. Well, we are the temple um, in Ezekiel when talking about the third temple, that is referring to God's people. And then later on, of course, the lamb, uh, excuse me, God and the lamb are the temple. So how does this fit in to what we're talking about here? It fits in exactly as God says it fits in. I don't need to make it up. He says within the context of those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And in each of those situations, he required me to humble myself while another person was trying to exalt themselves while stepping on my head, right? In one case, he told me that she will die. In the other case, he told me she will serve you. And I believe it. I believe it 100% because I know that I heard it from him. So he's going to continue with a message. Don't get tripped up by the headings that are in between because those headings were implemented by man, not God. He's continuing a lesson here. So he, the last thing he said is the greatest among you will be your servant for those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those who are enter who are trying to. So he's already identified them as hypocrites. He's saying that they are trying to, essentially they're controlling they're trying to control the kingdom of heaven, right? They're shutting it in people's faces. They're controlling the message. They're hypocrites. They are counterfeit Christian. I uploaded a video a little while ago talking about counterfeit Christianity and how we get, you know, we get very frustrated about this. And, and, but don't let that taint what it means to be Christian. That's not Christianity. And so you need to get that straight because when other people say things about Christians, you need not join in the way that they're saying that. You need to identify that that is counterfeit Christianity. You need to identify what it actually means to be Christian and you need to be an example of it rather than trying to change the language that God has established about his own church. 
it's important that we're identifying as Christian because we are in his name. And if we have his name on us, then that means that we would certainly be identified with that name. Why would we change that? Because Satan established a counterfeit? Well, who is he? He's nothing. You know, I told you, I, I've told you before in other videos that when I first, um, you know, God had given me the name of the book, A Soul Aligned. And when I first published the book, I went to go Google the book and realized that there were like, there are other pagan concepts of what it means to have an aligned soul. And I was really upset about it. And I went back to God and I said, like, why did you have me do this? And what he told me is they're not the author of a soul. He is the author of a soul. In Genesis, he breathed, he, he formed man from the dust and breathed life, breathed his breath into his nostrils and man became a living soul. God's the author of soul. Am I going to change the language now and give that power to the enemy? No, I'm not going to give him that. That belongs to God. So we need to be able to identify counterfeit Christianity and we need to make sure that we are not count part of counterfeit Christianity, that we are truly bearing the name and we are truly bearing his image. So what is he identifying right now? He's identifying exactly what we would be saying today of counterfeit Christianity, the same problem that was going on back then. Why is it the same problem that was going on back then? Because it's the same devil doing it. All of the things that we're dealing with today are age old problems. These are all problems that have been addressed since the Old Testament. All of the idolatry that we're doing, it's all the same recycled stuff and God can foil all of it. So he says, woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those who are trying to. So they're not entering. And they also are not allowing those who are trying to enter. They're prohibiting them from entering. Do you think that that's going on today? Do you think that that's going on today in counterfeit Christianity where people are being prohibited from entering? Absolutely. They are being lied to. They are being misled. But I'm, I'll tell you something else. Much of that is happening because of what's in their own hearts. They're being given opportunities by Christ. They are being given opportunities in listening to the witnesses. And I'll tell you right now, the majority of people will not listen to this message. They will not listen to what is in his word. They will make up their own doctrines and chase after teachers, gather around them, many teachers who tell them what their itching ears want to hear. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. Woe to you, blind guides. You say if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But anyone who swear swears by the gold of the temple is bound by that oath. Okay, so you understand what that means? Like they, they're not getting it. They're not getting that the temple is holy, right? They they think that it's just the riches that are holy. Now, is that what's going on in counterfeit Christianity right now? Are the, is that their value? The maintaining the royal splendor of the harlot and the prostitutes that bore out of her? The relics and the statues and the images and the crosses and all of this stuff. The images of counterfeit Christianity. You blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? You also say if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing. But anyone who swears by the gift on the altar is bound to that oath. You blind men, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Okay, so you understand that this is pointing forward. The altar is Christ. He's the one who makes us sacred. We're nothing without him. Therefore, anyone who swears by the altar swears by it and everything on it. And anyone who swears by the temple swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. And anyone who swears by heaven swears by God's throne and by the one who sits on it. And of course, this came up in Bible study last night. So I just want to make sure that I mention it. Of course, we're not supposed to swear by heaven because what do we, what control do we have of heaven? What authority do we have in heaven? None. That's God's dwelling place. That's where his throne is. Yes is supposed to be yes, or no is supposed to be no, and that's it. God is the only one who can swear by himself and everything that he has authority over. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, 
but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. All right, I want to focus on that for a minute. That's that's what he's been talking with me about. And when he was talking with me about it, what he's talking about is exactly the work that I teach you in Heart Known Series and A Soul Aligned. The work is not some new thing. The work has to do with what God has called us to do, which is to work on our hearts, to clean the inside of our soul. The inside of our soul is not the flesh, is not the shell that we are in right now for the moment, the mind and body. That's the flesh, the mind and body. We are supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, and we are supposed to be working in our hearts and the spirit that is willing. Remember that the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. So do you understand what he's saying right here? Do you understand the people he's rebuking and what their destiny is? What's going to happen to these people? Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. So this is what he thinks of people who live in the flesh, who give a superficial effort to healing, a superficial effort to their uh, so-called faith walk, always declaring things with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. You can declare with your lips all day. You can even speak on the word of God and your heart can be far from him. It is exceedingly important that you are doing this work. It is not only exceedingly important, it is essential and critical to your salvation because if you don't do this work, if you are not being changed and he's not pulling counterfeit Christianity out of you, there's no way that you can fulfill this covenant. All of us have been affected by this world and counterfeit teaching. So I want you to understand that though I am not doing as many videos in a day, don't take that to mean that you just kind of take a break from everything or go start listening to someone else to fill your time. You need to go to God. That's what this time is for. It's for you to apply the work because these videos truly are not for entertainment. They're not entertainment. You really need to apply the work. You need to ask him for the message. Seek your your daily bread from him. Now listen to what he says. He says, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. So let me help you understand something. I tell you all the time that you, your body and your mind are going to bear the consequences. They are going to manifest the spiritual an emotional dilemma, the spiritual and emotional condition of your soul, of what's going on in your heart and spirit. That's what's happening. If you clean the inside, the outside will be clean. Now, when people were going through the, when Jesus was going through the towns and people were ill and they were calling out to him, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus. And he would say, what do you want? And they would say, if you're willing, make me clean. These were people with all kinds of afflictions. Why did they use that language? make me clean. Why was it considered that why would why were they considered to have been dirty or defiled or unclean? They had a clear grasp on this, didn't they? They had a clear grasp on what it meant to have been defiled in their soul and bearing manifesting the consequences of their spiritual condition. You need to understand that all of the things that God is sending in your life are his attempt to call you in and you need to perceive it, and you need to respond to it. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs. You look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Okay, you hear what he says? He's saying you look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear as people to people as righteous, but on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Think about what you see in counterfeit Christianity. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. And, and by the way, this is part of the reason why I don't do live videos, because I don't think that it's important for you to see me. That is a distraction. You don't need to judge the message by whether or not a person is dressed in the world and looks physically appealing. But on many of these videos that I've seen, that I've come across on YouTube, that's what people are doing. They're getting all dressed up to do their YouTube video and it becomes a distraction and you start to judge things by carnal standards and worldly worldliness looks appealing. It does. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Fine clothes. What did Jesus say? 
was was John dressed in what was was he dressed in? Was he wearing fine clothes? No, only those in king's palaces are wearing fine clothes. John the Baptist was wearing camel hair, calling out in the wilderness, eating locusts and honey. There was nothing that Christ would that we would desire Christ. There was nothing that we would desire John. And frankly, there's nothing that we would really desire his servants. But our tendency is to look for someone who speaks sweetly, who, you know, doesn't challenge us and who looks appealing and I want to be them. I mean, if that's what you're looking for, what I would say to you is you need to test that. Test it against what God says in his word because these are not the things he values, but that's what's going on in these large churches and large ministries. That is what's going on. And what's happening is that people are pursuing because they are enticed by their flesh to the message and to that stimulation of their flesh. The rock show, the counterfeit message, counterfeit covenant, counterfeit rapture, appearances of godliness convincing themselves that they are going to be saved by something that is easy and it simply will not save. So nothing new. It's nothing new. This is the same stuff that we're dealing with right now. And listen to what he says. On the outside, you look beautiful, but inside are full of bones of the dead and everything unclean. So he's telling you where it is that he cares what it is that he cares about. If he's dealing with you on the outside, he's sending you affliction. It's because he cares. These people are destined to wickedness. They'll receive their judgment later. But if he's dealing with you and you have some sort of illness and have been made unclean, pay attention. Whether it's mental or manifesting as mental, emotional, physical, it is all spiritual. So clean the inside of your cup. That's the message that he is speaking with me about. Um, It's the message that he has placed on my heart to share with you. I hope that you'll take it seriously. I hope you'll use this time to really put into practice the things that I've talked with you about and really pursue him. It's a good time for a fast and it's a good time, always a good time to return to him. Thank you for listening. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video.